She's not what you'd expect. She's tough and feisty, but gentle and tender. She makes millions and gives millions to the poor. She cries, she laughs, she teaches, she comforts. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Hi, welcome to The Danny Johnson Show. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, it's a new year. And guess what? You've got a work life and you've got a home life. And I've got a question for you. Are you a jerk at work? Or do you have a jerk at work? And is your work perhaps home? Are you the jerk at home? Or are you a jerk at the office? I know you're not going to tell me if you are. In fact, I think that most jerks don't know that they're jerks. In all reality, I really think I know that I've been a jerk before. And maybe I didn't know that I was being a jerk. And then, of course, there's sometimes that people are just on purpose. They're just jerks. But here's the point. The point is, is that here on The Danny Johnson Show, we are about bringing you content and topics that will help you to succeed out there in the marketplace wildly. But not according to status quo success, not according to what our society tells you success is, but according to what you were designed for and what your destiny is, that calling that's been calling out to you since you were knitted together in your mother's womb, you are a person that is here on the planet for a reason. And you are not supposed to fit into somebody else's mold, friend. You're not supposed to act, walk, and talk like everybody else that is out there. In fact, if you do, you'll end up like them. And what is them? Well, let's just say majority majority of them are severely in debt trying to keep up with the Joneses. And I have no idea why, because the Joneses are totally flat broke with their big house, their two cars, all their lease payments and their kids with their three kids with their cell phones. And the list goes on. The shopping at the mall, the going into debt, the fighting behind closed doors, the sexless life. This is not the life for you. No way is it the life for you. I know that you do not want 2018 to be a life of living a facade and trying to put on a pretty face and trying to show everybody that everything's great. I'm no that you don't want to be that man that's like, oh, yeah, I'm strong, everything's wonderful, and your wife is emasculating you in the house. That is not success. So here on this show, we challenge you to define success for you. What is your personal definition for that? And see, this show today... Or we're talking about your work life. We're talking about either that business or that career that you have. And or maybe your full-time career is being at home. That that engineer at home that's just multitasking like crazy, managing it all, having to work under tight deadlines, crazy schedules, and things that are constantly changing. Lord, do I know that? I had five kids. I now have eight grandkids. So I understand the busyness of a mom. And I actually was a part-time businesswoman on the side for a long, long time. I actually first started my first business at the age of 19. This is 29 years ago. Shh. Shh. Such a long time ago. Anyway, so are you a jerk at work? I know you're not going to call me and tell me if you are, but I recently was reading this book and I'm I'm pretty sure I'm going to recommend the book to you. It's called The Ultimate Team Player or The Ideal Team Player. Um, And this book talked about, well, I can't say the term that it talked about in there, but it was talking about trying to grow a business and building a team and looking for the ideal team player. This book was incredibly convicting for me because I found some places where I kind of needed to improve on some areas. um, And I will improve on those areas this year for sure. Um, But it talked about, um, let's just say a jerk. They used a different term, but we'll just say it's a jerk. And that the jerks that are inside of a team are the ones that actually stop the team from growth. And then, of course, corporations and companies, small businesses and big businesses and even sales organizations that are not willing to do something with the jerks that are a part of the organization, well, you end up losing good, productive people because of one single jerk. So if you've ever been in that situation where you were the jerk or... Perhaps you had to work with a jerk and or you were a manager who had a jerk on your staff and you didn't quite know what to do about it. I want to hear the result. What was the result of the jerks that you had to work with and or if you were that jerk and you've got humility in your life today and you're willing to share how you were the jerk and what had to change and what the impact was of being a jerk, why? Danny, why are we talking about this? What does this have to do with success? Has everything to do with success? You know, people want to climb 
They're they're uh, in their position. They want to excel. They want to move ahead and move forward. And yet, if they're a jerk, they don't understand that they ain't going to get moved up. They're just going to get moved out. 830-315-1557 is my phone number. Again, that's 830-315-1557. Call me right now. Our lines are wide open. 830-315-1557. Again, if you've had to work with a jerk, I want you to explain it to me, and I want you to explain how it made you feel and how did you handle it today we're going to be discussing different strategies and ways to manage the people in which we are working with or living with every single day we need solutions on dealing with them because there's jerks everywhere is there not 830-315-1557 if you got the courage to call call me right this minute my lines are open 830-315-1557 whether you're the jerk and you've got humility to talk about it and or you're someone who's had to suffer with working with a jerk. Tell us about the experience. Tell us how it affected you, how did it affect your production, because someone is driving down the road right now listening to this, and they are realizing, ah, this has to change. Just like when I was reading this book. When I was reading this book and it was talking about the jerks, I was like, ah, yeah, yeah, sometimes I've been a jerk and, mm, well, uh, I might have a couple jerks and we might have to do something about that because it does. It massively affects the team morale. It massively affects the production. And a company cannot move forward in achieving their goals when we've got somebody that is actually pulling everybody down. And what are the different ways that somebody is a jerk? I've experienced many many. I want you to share with us the many ways that you've experienced at 830-315-1557. By the way, if all the lines are busy, just leave us a voicemail message uh, and tell us, give us your comment even right there. And or if you have a question about like, yeah, how do I deal with that jerk? My boss is a jerk. Uh, He's a I can't say this term. No, I can't say this term. I really want to say this term. I I just shouldn't. I just shouldn't say this term. Anyway, we'll just stick with jerk, right? Uh, Because we all got to deal with them. We really, really do. Again, the phone number is 830-315-1557. Here, I've got a comment here uh, from Facebook. We've got uh, Kathleen Miller who writes, uh, she says, someone who asks for your opinion but doesn't listen or really care. She says, they ask just to ask. Okay, now in her opinion to Kathleen, that's a jerk. Yeah. So somebody who says they want your opinion. OK. And this is a working environment. OK. We're, we've got a project that we're going to do. Hey, I want to get your opinion on it. And so from her perception, this particular person just keeps asking for the opinion but never uses it. And to her, that communicates, you is a jerk, man. You is a jerk. Now, the question I have for you is, is that person really a jerk? First of all, the fact that they're actually soliciting your opinion is a good thing. That's an amazing thing. That actually, actually is a sign of humility in the in the leader who's asking you for their, your opinion or the coworker that's asking you for your opinion. The fact is, is that everyone has a different perspective, perspective on a matter. So let's say it's a project at work, right? So everyone has a different way to approach it. And here's the here's the larger thing. This is the this is the bigger, the better, the higher, the the higher leadership level that all of us should be aspiring to. And that is recognizing that not everyone has the same opinion and not everyone should have the same opinion. All humans were created differently. They were wired differently, where they were knitted together in their mother's womb differently. So when this has happened, then of course we're going to get different perspectives. The bottom line is, is that I only use a small portion of my brain when I'm awake you know, and sometimes I think I'm walking around with the lights are on and maybe some t- somebody, somebody's not home in there. You know, you know, you know how you got some programs happening in your ta- in your head. You got some other tapes that are playing at the same time and someone's sitting there talking to you. Have you ever done that? I've done that so many times. I'm sure you have, too. And so when some when someone is perceiving something, it's having to filter through all of that information that they have uh, that they have received throughout their entire life. And so if, if two people have the same exact opinion from the same exact perspective, chances are someone's not telling the truth. There's a good chance that someone isn't telling the truth or they're not sharing the fullness of their feelings about it. They're not sharing the fullness of their opinion about it. Somehow they've either shut themselves down out of their own insecurities and or 
Um, yeah, they just feel, again, out of their own securities, that what they have to say really doesn't matter. And if that's you, I got to tell you something. What you have to say does matter. And it doesn't change it whether or not somebody uses your opinion. Believe it or not, your opinion actually does sway the person who heard it. It might change and tweak just a little bit about how they feel or how they think about the subject matter in which you gave your opinion about. So you have to understand that your opinion is never wasted. It's never wasted. It really does flavor. It might be a little bit of salt or a little bit of pepper on that beautiful steak. It might be just a little extra added color to add some vibrance to the actual picture. And so first of all, Kimberly, if you are working around somebody that you think is a jerk and they ask for your opinion but they never use it, guess what? They do use a portion of it, believe it or not. Because again, you salted it or you added a nice little herb to it, you add a little flavor to it, you add a little bit of spice to it, you added a little something that then elevated their perspective and or their opinion as well. So be, just because they don't use 100% of what you say doesn't mean that person is a jerk, okay? But if somebody just like puts you down constantly for your opinion, okay, or or just shut you up. Like to me, a jerk is someone that will not even give, not even ask. A jerk is someone that's not even going to elicit and want to even hear what those words are. Okay. That to me is a bit of a jerk. You know, they don't, they don't care. They don't care what anybody else thinks. They're just the bulldozing person that's just going to bulldoze through life and do it their own way. And it's their way or the highway. Now that is a jerk for sure. Okay. But the guy who actually humbles himself enough to ask other people their opinions and allows that person to talk and share their opinion, that's not a jerk. That's a person who is actually caring enough to see what's inside of another person to hear it, but at the end of the day, they're still going to make whatever their decision is. And it doesn't mean that they rejected your opinion if they did not use your opinion. It just means that we are gathering information. So Kimberly, from your perspective, honey, this is what I want to see you do. I want you to not hold tightly to your opinion. Don't cling to it. Don't dig your heels in the ground. Simply just understand that your opinion is coming from where? It's coming from your personal perspective. Your personal perspective of what? Years. How many years have you been on the planet, honey? Is it 20 years? Is it 40 years? How many years have you been on the planet? You've accumulated all of this wisdom, all of this knowledge, all of this experience, and your opinion has been filtered through those experiences. And sometimes that opinion uh, helps in a certain circumstance, and sometimes it's just there to salt it or pepper it or pull out some vibrance or to even just confirm a matter. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's important that, that first of all, sometimes we think people are jerks when they're actually not jerks, where we're actually the jerk, where we're like, hey, if I'm going to give my opinion, you better do what I say. If you don't do what I say, then you're a jerk. No, you're the jerk if that's how you think. You're the jerk if you think that your word and your opinion should always be used. That's you being a jerk, friend, and that's not you understanding how to work together as a team, to be a collective body of different opinions, different ideas, and different issues, okay? All right, so this is Danny Johnson. We're talking about the jerks at work, how to handle them, what to do about them, and if you are one, time to change. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more after this. So are you the jerk at your work? You might be surprised when Danny pulls back the curtain next on The Danny Johnson Show. More resources, more training, more results. The DannyJohnson.com Insider Membership is your ultimate success shortcut. Get exclusive access to reports, videos, audios, ebooks, cheat sheets, and other training for your personal and professional life. This is truly DannyJohnson.com's best kept secret. Become an Insider Member today and get on the fast track to success. Imagine living in a decrepit, unsafe hovel made of waste material on top of old mining tunnels that could explode and sink your home at any moment. Imagine no water to drink, no safe place to raise your children, no food for your starving baby. Imagine that your kids can't learn to read because they have to work to support the family instead of going to school. Could you imagine living in that kind of fear and hopelessness? 
This is exactly what families are dealing with in the poverty-stricken village of Santa Pancha, Nicaragua. These families can barely meet their basic food, water, and housing needs. We are transforming that village. Be a part of this miracle. I want you to go to the website now and learn how you can help. Go to kingsransom.org and click on Santa Pancha. There you can join with other warriors against poverty and help bring a miraculous transformation to Santa Pancha. That's kingsransom.org, kingsransom.org. The whole story of how I went from homeless to millions is right here in this book, First Steps to Wealth. I'd love to give you a free copy of this book. Just dial 888-757-8880. You can get your free copy of this book. It's like a real book, my friend. You can get an ebook copy for free right now, or if you'd like to pay the shipping to get this $15 book to your house, I'd be happy to send it to you. 888-757-8880. Get your copy of First Steps to Wealth today and begin on a brand new path of some great success. Hi, I'm Danny Johnson. The most common question I get usually are from people who are trying to juggle their life. They've got kids. They've got kids who are involved in all kinds of activities. They've got business or their job, finances, trying to get out of debt, plus all their church activities and all the volunteer activities. And they're pulling their hair out going, how do I juggle this all? Man, I once lived just like that until I learned Time Secrets. Time Secrets showed me how to be able to cut my hours from 100 hours a week that I was working down to 20 hours a week and tripled my income as a direct result with what I learned. Time Secrets also showed me how to get my priorities in order, which healed up my marriage. And I became a mother that I want now was proud of versus becoming the mother I didn't want to be. And so if you feel like your world is running around in all kinds of different circles, you can fix that. Call 888-757-8880. Again, 888-757-888-0 for Time Secrets. And now back to The Danny Johnson Show. Calling all jerks. If you're a jerk, call now. <laughs> this is Danny Johnson. Welcome to The Danny Johnson Show. Are you a jerk at work and don't know it? Check this out. There was a poll that was done that when asked if they had dealt with jerks at work, 50% of Americans said yes, that they've had to deal with a jerk at work. However, check this out. This is hilarious. But when asked, have you ever been the jerk? Less than one half of 1% said yes. You know what I think that is? <laughs> so I want to know, what would you answer? Come on. Okay, listen. Is your answer yes, I've worked with... Are you one of the 50% of the Americans who say, yes, I've worked with a jerk at work? Uh-huh. And then the next flip question, are you perhaps a jerk at work? And less than one half of 1% said yes? Ooh, what does that show? That shows that perhaps we Americans hmm, either think higher of ourselves than we ought, or we are just completely unaware of our actions, our tongue, and our attitudes. Yeah, we're, chances are, we're not. So I want to know how you would answer that question. Are you the jerk at work? If you are not the jerk at work, I want to hear why you think you're not the jerk at work. And if you have a jerk at work, I want to hear about how he is the jerk. 830-315-1557 is my phone number. Again, that's 830-315-1557. I need you to help us and to teach us how you've dealt with the jerks at work. I need you to help express what those people have been like so that if there is a jerk listening, they might experience some conviction today. They might see themselves like they'd be looking like a deer in headlight, like, oh, I I, I just did that an hour ago. Why? Because when we are not self-aware, what does that mean? We're not aware of how we actually treat people, how we act when we're not. And most of us are not. And by the way, I'm probably 90% of the time not at all aware. And maybe 10% of the time I might be aware. And it, it might even be 1% of the time that I'm actually aware. Here's what I do know. I'm much more aware of my faults and my weaknesses today than I ever was 29 years ago when I started in business. Oh, Lordy. I used to try to hide 
hide all of those weaknesses. I used to not be able to talk about my failures. Today, it's healthy to talk about our failures and our weaknesses. So again, the phone number is 830-315-1557. If you got the courage to talk about the jerk that you work with, please help us. Why? Because the jerks that are listening and watching today's program need to see what that looks and sounds like. That's why. You know, you can't confront that jerk. Generally, that jerk is like, they just become more of a jerk, right? How do you know if you don't have a jerk? You know based on this. You know basically that if somebody, if you actually confront somebody that is a jerk, they humble themselves. They literally humble themselves and and they say like, oh man, thank you so much. I didn't know that I was, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. Like they own it. They totally own it. And if you are a jerk and you own it, well then you're not a jerk. You're humble which I love that. All right, awesome. We've got Carlos Campos um, from California. Uh, Carlos. Carlos, Carlos, Carlos Campos. Hello. Happy New Year. Oh, my gosh. Happy New Year. Okay, so so I want to know, which one are you? Or have you been the jerk ever at work? Or do you work with a jerk? I need to hear this experience because people need to understand what this actually looks like. So, uh... Yeah, I'm sure I've been a jerk before, but I, I, in the construction industry, I think that's the biggest industry with jerks. Tell me more about really. that. Tell me why. I, well, because I think in, in the construction world, they believe that leading with an iron fist and pissing everybody off to get them to work better. You know, really? The whip and screaming and yelling at them. I've, I've worked around guys that I thought were going to have a heart attack. They were screaming so loud at people and cussing. They would jump in a hole and start digging like they were some frantic, crazy wild man. No. F-bomb this, F-bomb that. And what's wrong with you guys? You're so lazy. And trying to lead with fear in construction. I don't know why construction has that reputation, but you can even probably to this day go on job sites and just hear like the people yelling at each other and cussing each other out at times. It's just that industry for some reason has that reputation. Wow, you know, that sounds like a reality t- TV show. Yeah, it would be fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what that sounds like to me. That sounds like that should be a reality TV show. So that's it's really sad. Really now tell me, how long have you worked in construction? Oh my gosh, uh, off and on for probably twenty-five years since I've been a teenager. I've been around it. Wow. So. Wow. Yeah. That's a long time. That's a really long time. So, okay, so out of out of the 25 years, how many bosses have you encountered or coworkers have you encountered who's actually done things like that, right? Just looking like they're blowing a gasket. I want you to think about this for a second. We got to cut over to a break. I want to get dive deeper in how to solve this issue. This is Danny Johnson. Right. We'll continue with more right after this. Be sure to tell a friend about the Danny Johnson show. It just might be the key to the breakthrough they need. This is your chance. This is your shot. Get your copy of War on Debt right now. There's one waiting for you that has your family's name on it. And inside that package is freedom. Your freedom, your family's freedom is on the inside of that package. All you have to do is open it up, press play, and start applying what I teach you in this program. 888-757-8880. You and I are going to help your family become completely debt-free in the next five to seven years. Just imagine how that's going to feel. Did you know you can see Danny Johnson live and in person? Go to dannyjohnson.com and find out about our next live event. First steps to success, register today. Call 866-760-8255 or go to dannyjohnson.com forward slash FSTS. Prior to plugging into DannyJohnson.com, I was working 60 to 75 hours a week. I was completely stressed out. I was incredibly angry with my husband. We were in over $350,000 worth of debt. By applying the strategies that Danny teaches, in the last three and a half years, we have paid off $170,000 in debt. We are no longer roommates and we no longer spend every single cent that we make. We now have made tens of thousands of dollars in passive income and investments. We are on the right track. We're traveling around the world together. And we are building homes for those who really need it. So I don't know about you, but if you want to cut back from 60 to 20 and 30 hours a week, if you want to mend some relationships, if you want to make your life more efficient and a lot more fun, and you want to be the best version of you, 
I highly recommend that you get registered because your life is about to change. Prior to plugging into DannyJohnson.com, first steps to success in creating Dynasty, my wife and I were really lost. We were struggling in a relationship. We were struggling financially, drowning in debt. Our relationship was really broken. We were in a bad place. We were living in two completely different states and not really honoring each other. Once we got plugged into to the community, we noticed a shift in our lives. Uh, most importantly, we came together as a husband and wife. That was the first thing we did. And when we finally came together under the same roof, things started to change. Over the past three years, we've been able to pay off over $495,000 in debt. Uh, I know my business, I've had a job created for me that increased my income by 50%. That has actually opened up the door to allow my wife and I to spend more time with each other. So I don't know where you are. I don't know if your relationship is super awesome. I don't know if your job is immaculate. I don't know if you're debt free. But what I do know is if you're not any one of those things, your next step is to get plugged into DannyJohnson.com. Go on the website, get plugged into the community. I promise you, your life will never be the same. And prior to plugging into DannyJohnson.com, I was a broke college student, drowning in debt, and I felt like the world was crashing all around me and I had bad relationships. Since plugging into DannyJohnson.com and First Steps to Success, I was able to pay off $6,600 in four months. Now I'm able to give 10% of my income to wherever my heart desires. I actually, using the skills that I learned from Danny, I actually landed a job before I graduated college and I'm able to travel the world. All I know is if you're serious about annihilating your debt, traveling the world, helping people, and having fun doing so, I highly recommend you get registered for the next First Steps to Success. Do it now, don't wait, don't even think about it. If you're ready to change your life, just do it. We went to our first ever First Steps to Success just 10 weeks ago, and it has definitely been life-changing ever since. We felt like we got hit by a two by four, but it was the best two by four, because what we realized is that our priorities were clearly out of line. I had been building a home-based business and had been working 80 to 100 hours, and I realized that that is not my role, and that I had actually taken my husband's, and it was that realization that something had to change, and we immediately went home and changed everything. There was no hesitation. We said, you know what? We need to be obedient to God. Mm -hmm. And we've implemented the tools day one. We started implementing what Danny taught us, um, invested in ourselves, invested in our kids, got our priorities in line. We've now actually paid off just not quite 60000 in debt and looking at a couple more investments here as head of the household. It's been absolutely incredible. So I just encourage you, if any of this speaks to you, if you're wanting to get out of debt, if you're wanting better communication, if you're wanting to elevate to the higher level of life, get to First Steps to Success and plug into DannyJohnson.com. What multimillionaire do you know that volunteers their time to help ordinary people like you and me? There's only one. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Okay, could you imagine being at work and having your boss like calling you a dumb fill in the blank and an idiot and a blankety blank. Could you imagine being at work and that somehow you made a mistake and this guy looks like he's gonna blow a gasket, man. His veins are popping in his in his throat and he's just cussing you out and, and, it's, in, and it's on a construction site and he's got a shovel and now he's gonna show you how to do it. Carlos Campos has experienced this himself. We're talking about the jerks at work and how do we solve this? How do we deal with this? Because here's the facts friend. It's 2018. It's a brand new year, right? And not everything this year is going to go great. In fact, I remember on my first day of the year, okay, well, actually the first day after the first day, <laughs> January 2nd, okay, January 2nd, you know, when you're like, okay, we're back to work. We're going to be working out. We're going to be eating right. I had the floppiest day. Man, I felt awful that day. It could have been because of all the sugar I ate the day before. Um, but I just, I remember going, oh, this day sucked. <laughs> I had so many internal things that I was dealing with like a fool. And I did a couple things right, but I didn't do it all right. And so here was the fact. And this is what I said to myself. 2018 is going to have all kinds of opposition. It's going to have all kinds of challenges. And I am going to do the best I can to on a daily basis, making sure I'm accomplishing something that I've set out to do. One or two things. One or two things. And that's what determines whether or not I failed or succeeded that day. And I always have another day to succeed, which will be the next day. But in the case with Carlos Campos, 
who's joining us now from California. He just finished explaining, explaining to us the jerks he's experienced at work. He's been in construction for 25 years. So, Carlos, in 25 years, how many of these, you know, just kind of jerks have you worked with? I'll just keep it at well, that. I mean, it's dangerous he's known for it, but probably the worst case was this guy that luckily he wasn't my boss, mm-hmm. but I watched him over his people, and he just led with fear and anger. And literally the cops would get called on him because he would work in neighborhoods. He was, We were doing this development, and he was the, the main contractor on the development. And we were doing the landscaping portion while he was doing the construction, building the homes. And I'm telling you, he would literally, the neighbors would start calling cops because they'd hear this guy just screaming and yelling at his guys and cussing them out. And they would think that he's fighting or something. Oh. But that's just how he did construction. And I've known other contractors to do that. And again, it, it's a crazy scenario to see that happen, but like it, it, it works for an extent. Like right? people are can be driven by fear, but uh, for me, we we recently jumped into some huge contracts, and we now have 16 to 18 guys on site with a big project that we're doing commercial wise. And it's so interesting because I I made a, a pact to make sure that coming into these situations with with lots of team members that we treat it like sports. And I love your example. You talk about this all the time, you know, where you're a coach and you're there to edify and encourage your team to do well and yeah. set the tone right at the beginning of the game, which is game is every day, right? Yeah. Every day is game day. Yeah. So we we set out to make a difference in, in what people would experience in the atmosphere of a construction site, a yep. commercial construction site. We're talking hard hats, vests, everything. So mm-hmm. it's one of those construction sites and what's interesting is i have guys working for us now now new guys who are like this is weird i'm actually asking i'm saying please when i ask for something thank you and being nice to people on this (laughs) job site and they're like i've never ever experienced this on a project before and they're like i don't know what's gotten into me that i actually say please you know usually it's like give me that effing tool or get the out of my way you know it's that kind of intensity on most construction Sites, which I don't know why, but it's just the reality of it. I used to think that I, the old me used to think, well, I'm going to go correct people, right? I'm going to tell them you're, you shouldn't do it that way. Mm-hmm. But it, what, what, what I realized is that light is always going to outshine the darkness, and mm-hmm. I really needed to be that light and mm-hmm. be the example, not try to change them, mm-hmm. not try to correct them, because it just makes it worse to compound it. You try to correct them. I remember one guy I worked with, he was a, he was a finisher, and he was teaching me how to do finish it and work, and trim carpenter. And he was a jerk. He used to tell me, you know, that, that uh, you know, that his mouth, that some about the mouth and the toilet and all this stuff, you know, and then he would cut every other word just because he knew that that wasn't my standard. I've lightened up over the years. But, <laughs> <laughs> I've hung out with people like you, but uh, I'm not so stiff anymore. But back in the day, I was stiff and I was known as the religious boy. Oh, and so, and oh. So he would totally like nail me even worse like yeah every chance he got he'd try to cuss in front of me and then when i had to work with him it even got worse where we almost got in a fight <laughs> and, and and so like but it was all over languaging like i used to get so offended by it too and i, I like what you said because that's so true like why do we have to get offended too because some people that's just who they are yeah but this guy was just a, a real piece of work and and i remember i always used to try to correct him like dude why do you have to your mouth is your mouth is now cleaner than the toilet, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, and and I always used to try to correct him, and it just caused more conflict. Yes, it does. It yes, more. it does. Now, now on our job site, it's the funniest thing. So we had a meeting yesterday, and one of our guys is from Philly, and every other word is F word. Yeah. And, and I'm not offended by it anymore. Wow. But yet, it's not the atmosphere that we have. But he literally said, "Bro, you're like a Christian, and you're cool." <laughs> and, and it's this, and you're an effing Christian. I'm like, do those go together, dude? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, that's cool. And he's like, I've never met a Christian like you, man. Yeah. It's just nice. And you said, it. I've never worked on a job site like this. And he's like dropping the F-bomb every wow. through his whole sentence, you know. Wow. Carlos, I want to I want to interrupt you, you real know? quick. I want to interrupt you really quick because this is, su- this is really powerful with what you're saying. Because um, usually when people find out that you love God and you're a lover of Jesus, Jesus, the Messiah, that that all of a sudden you become a target and you're put into a box. You literally are put into a box of altar boy, right? Little kiss blank. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you, 
you you are holier than thou you're self righteous you know what i mean like all of a sudden yeah. that's how that's how people are treated and this it's the sad thing is because we have Per, we have projected ourselves to be that way instead of being a people who are what you said, which was so powerful out of everything you said was this, not to correct my boss or not to correct somebody else that's using that language, but to be a light that shines and expels darkness. A light is not a judge. A light is not somebody that is self-righteous. A light is love is love and acceptance and creating the environment that people feel safe in, that they feel heard in, that they can feel encouraged in, that they don't feel judged in. And what you're doing is just that. And what you used to do was your your definition of being a light was being a judge, was being Jesus himself. And that's not, no, you are not, you were not the one that was on the cross. The only one that's got the right to judge anyone's foul language is God Almighty himself not you not me and so this is what's so interesting is i bet you anything that jerk who used to do that to you probably perceived you as a jerk christian that's right right he probably perceived you as a jerk christian because you were all you know as though carlos campo has never used that kind of language yes you have it is i was self-righteous yeah and that's a jerk what Self-righteous people are jerks. They are. I'm sorry. I'm just calling it out like it is. I've dealt with many of them, and I've been one of them before. I've also been perceived as one, and I hate it when somebody puts me in that box with, box with the rest of the self-righteous people who have this, you know, you're, they, you got to dress a certain way. You can't ever mess up. You, you can't use that kind of language. Now, listen, that kind of language is not helpful and conducive to, to the marketplace. I get it, but you know what? I have failed in that department probably more than a lot of men have. <laughs> I grew up learning that language from my parents. <laughs> like it was like the and and like it was just it was just another word. You know what I mean? It, well, it wasn't Andy, good or I bad. Appreciate, I appreciate you so much. You have no idea. I've got my son back, mm. and my son uh, Levi was this just this project brought us back together. But another thing was our conversation. I purposely will drop things now because I know that's who he is. Yep. And he felt comfortable with me now. Yeah. We can have conversations and yeah. he doesn't even, it, it's amazing because I knew it was purposeful. Maybe people listening don't agree with that and that's yep. okay. They're in their place. But that's right. literally I will say things on purpose to express things and use a cuss word just mm-hmm. because I want him to feel comfortable and know that I'm not this self-righteous religious person that he grew up with. Yeah. And I have my son back. Man. And and we're closer than ever now. Wow. And and this project brought wow. that us back together, but so did the fact that I was not going to be limited by uh, my self-righteous languaging and a, yeah. and help him to feel more comfortable because right now he's not in a place where he even believes in God and that's okay. Yeah, that's right. I'm okay with that because right. I just am going to love him that's through right. it all. That's and right. That's a blessing to have him back and that's what Amen. I'm celebrating, you know. Man, I so got I tears in my eyes on this so one. Much. Thank you, because Carlos. You're awesome to have taught me that. I remember one of the meetings. <laughs> I didn't want to say it. I was like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's done freaking done. And you're like, no, no. Yes, yes. I'm so oh, proud of you, done. Carlos. Really, oh, I'm serious. And, and I hope everyone that's listening right this minute understands the context in which you're talking about. You built a bridge with your son of love using terminology that he understands, not terminology where he is being judged with it but instead creating a safe place for your son to be right where he's at and to love him where he's at. And that is unity and that is godliness. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more right after this. Do you ever participate in gossip at work? Of course not, right? Right? Stay tuned and let's talk about it. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Did you know you can take The Danny Johnson Show with you wherever you go? It's never been easier to stay up to date with the latest content from Danny with the DannyJohnson.com app. Watch or listen in the car, at the gym, or on the go. Download it now from the App Store and Google Play and never miss a show again. Your family, business, and bank account will thank you. 
Did you know you can see Danny Johnson live and in person? Go to dannyjohnson.com and find out about our next live event. First steps to success, register today. Call 866-760-8255 or go to dannyjohnson.com forward slash FSTS. My name's Derek and this is my wife, Michelle. And um, we're the Holland Sheds. Um, we live in Covina, California, about 45 minutes from here. And we're, we're extremely honored to be able to share our, sto uh, our story. And um, when we were approached about it, I was kind of thinking, well, where do I start? <laughs> where do we start? But um, um, I'm going to start a few years back before there was a Michelle and Derek. Um, actually, I, I was actually debt free, you know, and kind of going along pretty good. And then, <laughs> and then a, a funny thing happened. I got married and I married into debt. And, uh, and uh, you know, okay, you know, we're, 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 we're gonna do fine, we'll, we'll pay it off and life will be good. But a funny thing happened was that that didn't seem to happen. <laughs> yeah, uh, and what, as a result, it, um, you, know, you know, just kind of thinking it's gonna happen, or we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, and something always happens, and you know, and the result is that you know, debt doesn't get paid. So, you know, it starts becoming like an old friend. And then, uh, unfortunately, the marriage failed, but uh, I was able to meet Michelle, and uh, you know, we got married. And um, well, married into debt again. <laughs> only, only, only now it's a little bit bigger, but uh, at least the house that I had, you know, this was during the housing boom, so use you know, some of the equity in the house to you know pay that debt off. And and uh, okay, we got a clean state. Let, let's go forward. And uh, um, but you know, you know, in in our early days in our marriage. Uh, yeah, we had some difficulty as far as being on the same page financially, and Michelle will share a little bit more about that. And uh, I guess it's a good, good point for me to hand it over to her. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Um, like Derek said, honestly, you guys, the first seven years of our marriage, when I came into our marriage, Derek did. He paid up my debt all. And um, I ran our debt up three different times in the first seven years of our marriage, you guys. I would have never imagined being in that spot. Derek didn't trust me. And um, I finally got to a place where, my gosh, I can't keep doing this. I was pretty much uh, told to come to this event by a good friend of mine. And it was the best thing she could have said to me because it's what I needed. I would have not have come had I not have had that charge and challenge that way. The moment I got here, and we saw the war, I saw the war on debt. I said, this is it, this is our ticket. This is our, this is what's gonna help us go to the next level. This is what's gonna help us. You guys, um, we were, we've since in 33 months, we have paid off over $159,000 worth of debt. We have money in savings. We have um, $300,000, uh, 300,000 in assets, uh, income producing assets. We uh, continue to plug in. Uh, I was the first one to come, but immediately afterwards, I told my husband I couldn't wait. I called him, I told him about War on Debt. He immediately said, let's do it. We had some friends that hosted a War on Debt class there right after, and we went to it, and we found $502 worth of excess spending our first month, and we revisited our budget after that, and then we found, we thought we were just broke, living paycheck to paycheck. We were overwhelmed, we felt hopeless. I never would have thought I would lose my husband's trust, and the techniques, the strategies that Danny Johnson teaches you guys were helped us save our marriage, our finances, our communication. You guys, we started out with, my favorite product is spiritual equipping, and I know Darren has a favorite product. We're on debt. No. You think? <laughs> you guys, we kind of bought things one by one. However, you guys have a great opportunity outside that door, that table out there, where you can buy the whole DJ, DJ University curriculum, and you get a th almost a thousand dollars, over a thousand dollars off. So you have either option, but that's a great opportunity for you. Don't let anything stop you guys. Um, there is hope. <laughs> you know, there is life, <laughs> and um, I'm very grateful and honored to uh, be here. So. Without further delay, you guys help us welcome back America's favorite millionaire and our mentor and coach, Danny Johnston. The 
the way you look at things is about to change. And now, back to The Danny Johnson Show. Are you the jerk that no one wants to be around and no one wants to work with? Hi, this is Danny Johnson. Welcome to The Danny Johnson Show. We're talking about the jerks at work. I think a lot of people think that other people are the jerk and largely don't think that they perhaps could be a jerk from time to time as well. When we're not aware of our actions, well, let's just put it this way. When we're not aware of our own faults, we seem to rise up as a judge against other people's faults. In fact, we asked this question on Facebook about, do you work with a jerk or are you a jerk at work? And it was amazing how many people had strong opinions about everybody else being a jerk, yet when it comes to the question of, are you the jerk at work? Yeah, you know, it's like less than one half of 1% who actually says, yeah, <clears throat> I've been the jerk. So I want to read you one of these comments. Uh, Suzanne Russell says, people who walk about, uh, who talk, not walk, <clears throat> sorry, people who talk about you behind your back, saying falsehoods and slanderous remarks, gossipers, ugh, I totally agree with that. People who are gossipers clearly are jerks. And yet I have found myself in that category without even realizing what I've done. Simply just sharing something that I heard about or learned about or just prepping somebody with something and not even realizing that maybe the tone in which I said it probably wasn't correct. And if that person was standing right there, would I have said the same exact thing in the same way? But see, it's so interesting because we've all been on the, we've been on both sides of the gossiper, right? The jerk gossiper. We have. We've been on both sides of this thing. And yet we like to point the finger at the one who did it to us versus owning it when we've done it to somebody else. And even forgiving the person who has gossip behind our backs, who has slandered us, who has bore false testimony against us. And largely when false testimony is bore against us, it's usually not out of a malicious heart. Generally, it is because of a lack of information and a lack of understanding and a, and a perception that's not quite the full picture of the circumstance that actually happen. But see, it's us that have to deal with it. And in 2018, if you're wanting to increase your income in 2018, you're wanting to increase your productivity, you're wanting to become more valuable in the marketplace, then this is the way to become more valuable. That when somebody else has failed you and has failed others, you have to decide whether you want to do what everybody else does, 98% of the population who ends up dead or dead broke at the age of 65, depending on their family, friends, and federal government for their main source of income. You got to find out how they deal with the gossipers and do the exact opposite. I'm pretty sure it's safe to say out of all of these years of working with thousands and tens of thousands of people and actually working people through leadership skill development in the area, especially with resolving conflict, especially with a gossiper, the majority of the people, and I'm, say, I'm, I'm here and I think it's very safe to say that it's over 90% of the people that when they encounter that somebody else bore fall, false witness against them, has slandered their name and gossip behind their back, Majority of the people just turn around and hate that person. They get offended by what that person has said. They get their heart all tied up in a knot, and then they cut that person off, and they turn around and they gossip behind that person's back. They do not do what the top 2% of the leaders in the world do. They don't do what the real winners do. What the real winners do is they will lovingly address the issue with the person who has slandered their name. They will literally get together with that person and say, hey, listen, I know that you would never in a million years try to hurt me. I know that you would never in a million years purposely try to say something about me that wasn't true. Some information came to my attention, but I know that you either didn't have all the information. I know that maybe you found yourself in a place where I have found myself in a place many times. I've let things out of my mouth that I should not. I have failed so many people throughout my entire life, my younger years, and even in these adult years. I have tripped and fallen over my own tongue and I have put both feet in my mouth before and I know that my intentions were not to do that, but yet I found myself in that place. So I just wanted to let you know 
that some information was brought to my attention, and I just wanted to address it so that we can actually solve the issue because I know that you and I both have the same goal, and that is for us to increase the production of this business and for us to grow. We both have family goals. We both have health goals. We both have career goals, and I want to be about helping you, and I would love for you to help me. So please um, let me know what it is that maybe you might have said. I'll let you know what I heard, and again, I'm not hurt. I just want to make sure that we have the truth out on the table the best way that we can see it. And I want to ask you to hold me accountable. If you ever hear me slandering somebody else's name or saying something in a derogatory way or saying something that is not right, made you feel uncomfortable, please come to me and let me know that I made this mistake because I do not want to be that person moving forward. So essentially what just happened there, rather than being the person that does what everybody else does, they get their, I can't say that, they get... They, they get their heart all tied up in knots, right? They get, uh, you know, blistered red face that's just pulsating like crazy, right? They, they, they want to slam their fist through a door. They get so upset and then they start spreading the gossip that the gossiper already spread, right? And the, the gossip was spread about them. And yet that person is the one going, did you hear that so-and-so said this and so-and-so said this about me? They, so now you're the one spreading the gossip that was gossiped about you, which is ridiculous if you really look at it. So you want to find out what everybody else is doing and do the exact opposite. Don't be like them. Switch that table around and do what 2% of the population would do if they were in that situation. Those who succeed, those who win on a daily basis, those who climb to the top without, again, stepping on other people, but they do it in honor. And yes, those people are out there. Those people are out there that build a fantastic career in honor, and you can be one of them. So don't be like the lowly guy who's handling gossip that way and turn around and be all upset because somebody else misunderstood you or misquoted you or or misperceived the actual thing that actually happened. So that's how you deal with the gossiper, Susan Russell, um, that has thrown you under the bus or whatever. All right. So we have Gray who says, people who throw you under the bus then pretend to be sorry, yet they were the masterminds to throw you off the cliff. Okay. This is a, this is a great comment. And I want you to see two different sides to this, Gray, um, because chances are this is not the only time this has ever happened to you. There's a good chance it's going to happen to you in 2018 as well. So how do we handle it? What do we do with it? <laughs> Number one, if you actually are thinking that that person mastermind put all this time and effort and thought into throwing you under the bus, and if you actually think that they said sorry, but they really didn't mean it, I have a question for you, Gray. When did God take himself off of his throne and put you in charge as the judger of all hearts? When did he dethrone himself and put you on his throne and gave you the ability to see the hearts, the minds, the thoughts, and the motives of man? Please. When did he dethrone himself? He hasn't dethroned himself, but you certainly have set yourself in his throne. And with our human mind, you decided that you know what the motives of a man are. And that you know whether or not somebody was really apologizing. And that you know whether or not somebody mastermind to throw you under the bus. That is a victim mentality. And a victim is not going to win, Gray, in 2018. You want to win in 2018. So the only way to win is to play to win. And the way to play to win, number one, is with humility. That understanding that you can't possibly know the thoughts or the heart of a man. You don't even know yours. I don't even know mine. Play to win, Gray. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more after this. Don't go away. The next segment might just change your life. This is The Danny Johnson Show. 
And I'm so blessed that I found what is in Grooming the Next Generation for Success. This is a book that is being taught in universities around the world. It's been noted as the best book on parenting that has ever been written. Crazy, if you ask me. But the point is, is that this thing gets results. Get your copy today, 888-757-8880. Again, that's 888-757-8880. Or go to dannyjohnson.com. That's D-A-N-I johnson.com. Get your copy today. Imagine living in a decrepit, unsafe hovel made of waste material on top of old mining tunnels that could explode and sink your home at any moment. Imagine no water to drink, no safe place to raise your children, no food for your starving baby. Imagine that your kids can't learn to read because they have to work to support the family instead of going to school. Could you imagine living in that kind of fear and hopelessness? This is exactly what families are dealing with in the poverty-stricken village of Santa Pancha, Nicaragua. These families can barely meet their basic food, water, and housing needs. We are transforming that village. Be a part of this miracle. I want you to go to the website now and learn how you can help. Go to kingsransom.org and click on Santa Pancha. There you can join with other warriors against poverty and help bring a miraculous transformation to Santa Pancha. That's kingsransom.org, kingsransom.org. More resources, more training, more results. The DannyJohnson.com Insider Membership is your ultimate success shortcut. Get exclusive access to reports, videos, audios, ebooks, cheat sheets, and other training for your personal and professional life. This is truly DannyJohnson.com's best kept secret. Become an Insider Member today and get on the fast track to success. The whole story of how I went from homeless to millions is right here in this book, First Steps to Wealth. I'd love to give you a free copy of this book. Just dial 888-757-8880. You can get your free copy of this book. It's like a real book, my friend. You can get an ebook copy for free right now, or if you'd like to pay the shipping to get this $15 book to your house, I'd be happy to send it to you. 888-757-8880. Get your copy of First Steps to Wealth today and begin on a brand new path of some great success. Helping you become all you were meant to be. And now, back to The Danny Johnson Show. So, I don't know if today's show was kind of a mirror in your face or not. <laughs> it wasn't necessarily intended to be, but it was to be able to help you to increase your income in 2018. How? Playing to win. That if you've got a jerk at work, or if you are that jerk at work, there's some things that you have to change. You have to change the way you deal with the jerks at work. And if you are the jerk, and you have a tendency and a propensity to be a jerk, then own that. What do I mean by own it? Simply humble yourself. That when you've been a jerk, I'm so sorry, I completely screwed that up. Please forgive me, there's no excuse. I would love for you to hold me accountable. I do not wanna to continue to fail you or anybody else in that way. Own it. Don't defend it. Don't try to hide it. Don't try to pretend like you weren't the jerk. No. Own it and own it instantly. There's a friend of mine that I work with. I absolutely love this man. He's built very successful companies. He's a successful multimillionaire. And there's something that he says. I can't quite quote him exactly the same here on radio and television, but I can kind of give you a preface. But he says, I wake up every single morning knowing I'm going to mess up and mess up big. But my strategy is I'm going to own it. <laughs> and what does that mean? He simply says that I'm going to apologize instantly. I'm not going to defend it. Defending wastes time. I'm not going to give an excuse for it. That just wastes time. I'm simply going to go, man, thank you so much for pointing that out. I totally screwed that up. Thank you so much. Hold me accountable. And then you just Keep going. You go about your day. It'll help you mess up more if you humble yourself. But if you're dealing with the jerks, please do not become the judge. Please do not become that person who thinks you're God Almighty sitting on the throne who has the ability to search the hearts and souls and thoughts of a man. You don't. The judgment is not going to help you deal with the jerk. As we heard early on in the show with Carlos Campos sharing the experience on a construction site, right? Okay. We've given you some strategies today. This is what I'm going to ask from you. Freely you receive today's information. Now freely give it. 
please share today's video on your social media platform. Go to Facebook. You can come over to our Facebook page, which is Danny Johnson Live, which is D-A-N-I Johnson Live, and or come over to our webpage, dannyjohnson.com. Our website has a tremendous amount of free materials. Not only the Danny Johnson Show and all the archives of the Danny Johnson Show, which is completely available to you right this minute, um, but as well as articles. We have a blog. We also have a free book that you can get a hold of right now that'll teach you some incredible strategies on how you can play to win in 2018. Get a copy of First Steps to Wealth. This is your very first time joining us on this show. Call our office right now, 866-760-8255. You can get your free copy right this minute, friend. Free. You can pay the shipping to get it to your house. I'll pay the $15 to get it to your house. Okay, so 15 bucks for the book. You pay the shipping and handling and or download the the e-copy, whatever they call that. You can download a digital copy of the book totally free right now if you go to dannyjohnson.com. If you already got the book, read it. Start applying it. You got to make this year the best year of your life, friend. You're going to do it with incredible strategies that are available to you right on our website. God bless you. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye. If this episode was an encouragement to you, go to dannyjohnson.com and share it with your friends now. You never know who else needs to hear it. This has been The Danny Johnson Show. Join us every weekday at 7 a.m. for more insights that will help you get to the life you've always wanted.